If you've ever been caught up in sexual sin, then you know that the path to that sin wasn't built on just one decision here or there, but rather was a joint effort on multiple fronts to get you to compromise what you believe and how you know God wants you to act in order to pursue this desire. In today's video, I'm going to share with you the five steps towards sexual sin and how we can reverse those things. And we're going to learn all of that from a book called Disciplines of a Godly Man. Now, this applies to not just men, but women as well. But it highlights the story of David, someone who is said to be a man after God's own heart. And yet, you know the story of Bathsheba and how he ended up trying to cover his sin by having Uriah the Hittite murdered. And this is kind of a crazy story. Maybe you've read the story and drawn your own conclusions with what led David down this path, but I'm going to share with you the five things that I think contributed to David's compromise and that are laid out in this book. If you enjoy my content, I'd encourage you to join us on Patreon. You can get access to exclusive videos, our Discord server. Um, we do video calls as well. There's a lot of fun stuff on there. So I'd love it if you join me on there and you help me in my mission to equip people to follow Jesus daily. Click the link in my description to sign up. Now on to the video. Now the first step to David's downfall and on his path to sexual immorality, sexual sin, was actually something that was cultural acceptable at the time. Now, even though the word of God talked about kings and people in general, men in general, not supposed to have um, excess horses or excess gold or excess wives, David was pretty good on two of those fronts where he didn't try to, you know, hoard excess horses or gold. But what the Bible does speak of him is doing is getting concubines and wives, which at the time people would have looked at him and said, oh, no big deal. That's pretty normal. But in God's sight, that was sin. I think about for us, a lot of the things that are culturally acceptable, whether that's watching Game of Thrones or an R-rated movie with lots of nudity in it, or just YouTube videos that are sexually, more sexually ex explicit or suggestive. I think about those things that are culturally acceptable, that even, even by Christian and Christian communities, people wouldn't bat a, a big eye at, but at the same time, it's still sin. And by compromising in this way, you are getting desensitized. That's kind of the first step is this desensitization that happens when we allow these things into our lives, when we make these compromises because it's culturally acceptable, because we have TikTok, because we follow Instagram models online or whatever that looks like, you're becoming desensitized and your conscience is becoming weak and watered down. The next thing that happens to David is he encounters this relaxation. And this relaxation is actually the relaxation of his disciplines. You see at the stage of his life, he was pulling back on a lot of his military pursuits. And that relaxation that he allowed himself into also spread to his moral life as well. For us, maybe you've been in the midst of this battle against sexual sin and against lust, and maybe it's pornography, and you feel like you've found some level of freedom and you feel safe. And so you let your guard down. But it's exactly then when we relax our own disciplines that we allow the devil to get a foothold in our lives. When we allow these sins to begin to creep up, you know, and, and, and get a hold of us again. The third step that David took was fixation. It says that David looked down and saw this woman bathing. And you think about how differently the story could have turned out if he saw this woman bathing and, you know, and he turned his eyes and he walked away and he continued on with his evening, but he didn't. He stayed and he fixated and he fantasized and he lingered. You're seeing the path being formed here, the desensitization, and then there's the relaxation of disciplines, and then there's the fixation, and I want this person, I need this person. In the midst of this, you would hope that the conscience would make itself known, but it is combated with the next step, which is rationalization. Rationalization, and we all do this, and and um, you know, you thinking about David, David saw that Uriah was always in battle and making these excuses in his mind, perhaps, of saying, you know, there's no way Uriah could be, you know, a, a good husband to Bathsheba and, and he's not there for her like I can be there and he can't provide what I can provide. And he's making these rationalizations of his actions. How often do we do this as well? You know, you shouldn't be watching this. You know, you shouldn't be doing this. And may, yet we make excuses. We say, well, I'm a good Christian 99 
99% of the, the, the other time, or, you know, why, why could this be so bad if it feels so good? Or I'm sure God would just kind of look the other way on this, on this one, because I've been so, you know, faithful to him in other areas of my life. I kind of deserve this in a way. And we use these really just dumb excuses, but they sound good to us at the time because it gives us a continued pathway towards the sin that we so desperately want. Now, the last step for David encapsulates a lot. It's what this book calls degeneration. This idea that when David, he had, you know, this, this desensitization, this relaxation of his disciplines, he had the fixation on Bathsheba, and then the uh, rationalization of what he was about to do. And then from there, it was just about, oh, you know, send for her. I want to be with her. And he was with her and she conceived. And that child, because of his sin, um, God uh, killed. And that was the judgment upon David, upon his lineage. And that's such a tragic thing, but it, it also didn't stop there. It, w- it was also the killing of Uriah, Bathsheba's husband, to cover up his sin to cover up what he had done. And you're thinking to yourself, man, why do people make it so hard on themselves? Why don't they just admit when they've done something wrong and like you don't have to do all this other crazy stuff in order to cover up your sin? But that's what sin does. It actually convinces us that the solution is more sin. It's more rebellion. It's more hiding. It's more, um, I need to avoid, you know, the consequences of what I've, I've done because I don't want to admit that I was wrong. I don't want to encounter that guilt and that shame and to lower myself in humility. I don't want that. And that was the path for David is he committed all of these things. And we're going to get to his repentance in a little bit, but let's go back to the beginning of this when we're talking about desensitization, talking about it from our perspective, what we encounter and how we can reverse these steps. So here's the deal. Instead of being desensitized by allowing all these different things in our lives, I've talked about this before, we need to detox the sexuality. We need to detox these sexually charged images, videos, movies that are leading us down a path that we shouldn't be going down. And uh, so what does that mean? Well, we're cutting out movies that are going to tempt us. We're cutting out social media platforms that are going to, you know, stimulate certain desires within us that we can't righteously fulfill. So we let those things go. We detox all those things that we're consuming and we begin to consume what is right and what is good and what is pure. We're focusing on things that are going to build us up and not lead us down that path. The next thing for David was relaxation when he relaxed his discipline. So what we must do here is stay firm to our discipline. This doesn't just apply to our discipline of keeping our eyes in the right place and and meditating on what is good and right and not on, you know, these lustful thoughts. But it moves beyond that too into just discipline, uh, overall disciplined mentality towards the rest of our life. Because if you're letting those things slip, then you give yourself license to slip morally. If you're saying, okay, I don't really care what I eat. I don't really care how I spend my time. I don't really care how I treat others. Then you say, well, why do I really care about, you know, how I, how I act sexually? Actually, you know, how, the things that I watch online, if I watch pornography, because the rest of my life is just so disordered and so undisciplined anyway. So that's why we must maintain this discipline. Then he lingered on this fixation that we talked about. What do we do? We must flee. We must flee. And we can practically set up things in our life that can help us flee these temptations. One of the best resources that I've encountered, I know plenty of guys that have used it and are continuing to use it, is Covenant Eyes. What I have for you is a 30-day free trial that you can use right now. If you go to the link in my description, it is an affiliate link and you help out the ministry and you help yourself honestly by tapping into this resource. It has been revolutionary. A lot of the lives of men and women as well um, in breaking free from pornography online. So I'd encourage you to check that out here. And that is one of the really practical ways that you can begin to just flee these lusts and these temptations online. The next step down the wrong road was rationalization. So how do we combat that? Well, right here, right now, we identify the excuses that we tend to use. What are the things you begin to say to yourself when you know, okay, I I want to watch this or I want to do this. So what do you say to yourself to feel like you have a license to do that? And I want you to dispel those things with truth right even now. Memorize the Bible verses that combat those lies that you're going to tell yourself. So then you in right conscience can't even allow those uh, excuses to, to permeate your mind because you're like, well, I know th- those aren't you know true. I know uh, what I'm saying to myself is just false and begin to ask God for that wisdom in the moment to be able to 
you know, zoom out for a second, even in the midst of, okay, you're stirred up sexually, uh, being able to say, okay, I'm going to calm down for a second. I'm going to really process, okay, uh, what am I doing here? And what is God calling me to? And God be present with me. And even in this moment when I'm tempted, that I can seek the Lord for his wisdom, for his strength, that I can overcome even the own, my own excuses that I'm telling myself. Now, the last piece of this, or maybe the first piece, depending on how you look at it, we talked about how David, he went down this road and he ended up committing all these, you know, really heinous sins uh, to try to cover up his sin. So where does that leave us? It leaves us in repentance. It leaves us in this place of saying, okay, we're not going to be perfect. We're going to make mistakes and we're going to sin sexually in some ways. But we can seek the Lord in repentance and humility. And when David was confronted by Nathan with the sin that he had committed, he said, against you and you alone have I sinned. His repentance was God word. It wasn't just based on the consequences that he had experienced, even though they were significant, the worldly consequences. He recognized that his repentance was to God and to God alone. And so that's where we need to be to say, God, hey, uh, I don't do this perfectly. I am sinful in so many ways. I've fallen short in so many ways sexually. I ask for your forgiveness. I'm so sorry for what I've done. Please make in me a clean heart and change my heart. Transform me that I would desire more and more to honor you in this area of my life. That is where we begin and that is where we end. Friend, you are never too far gone for God. Even if you feel like you've sinned so much sexually that God could never redeem you or you're stained. No, understand that when God saves you, he imputes you with his righteousness, meaning that when he looks at you, he sees you as white as snow. He sees you as Jesus righteousness. That is an amazing thing. That is a beautiful thing that we don't deserve and yet we're invited into by his grace. Thank you for watching this video, friends. If you enjoyed it, subscribe because I'm putting on new videos all the time. A huge thank you to everyone on Patreon who continues to support what I'm doing. Until next time, God bless.